Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Um, we're going to be trying uh, something a little bit different today. Um, I'm filming with my iPhone, so I hope the film quality is okay. Lighting probably won't be brilliant, but I wanted to get some content out. So I hope you like it. Um, today we're going to be focusing on getting the failsafe set up on my KingTech G4 Turbine. So KingTech have been quite clever about how they um, how they implement the failsafe mode on their turbine, and um, I've spoken to a lot of people about this, and um, most people have told me they don't do anything to set up their, their fail safe, it just works, okay, which is which is great, fantastic, well done King Tech. Um, but I really want to understand how it works, um, uh, how, you, how you can get the best out of it, and more importantly, um, test that it does work, and I think everyone should really be doing that. So I hope you like the video, um, if you do please subscribe, um, like the video, uh, if you've got any questions, any comments on the video, just post them down in the comment section below. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing the content, it'd be really good. It'd help motivate me to get some more content made for you. But um, let's crack on and let's look at what we're going to cover. Okay, so in the video, we're going to cover four things. So first thing we're going to cover is what is failsafe and when might it occur? Second thing is why we need failsafe implemented correctly in our turbine. You know, what, what's important about it? Then we're going to jump on the third thing. We're going to set up the going to run through the setup of the failsafe, um, how we configure it. And then finally, the fourth thing, we're going to test the failsafe works. I think probably the most important thing is that we test it works on the bench or somewhere safe and not rely on it working when you're up in the air. Right, I'm going to do a bit of waffle around what failsafes are and, and how they work. Um, so if you just want to jump to the important bit, how to set it up, um, in the video, there'll be chapter markers. You can jump straight to, to the bit you need. So um, if you're not interested in what I've got, got to say about failsafe, just <laughs> jump ahead. Right, so what is failsafe? Why do we need it? And is it important? Yes is the answer. We do need it and it is important, um, especially important in turbines, I, I, I feel. Um, so so what is failsafe? So failsafe is the kind of the special mode that um, your ECU will go in if it thinks it's... Um, if you're no longer in control. Okay, so when we talk about that, we normally think about failsafes as being um, a radio failure or, or a failure in the um, transmission between the, the transmitter and the receiver. Um, this this happens all the time actually during a normal flight. You'll have lots of times when the radio the receiver doesn't doesn't get a expected signal from the transmitter. That's called drop frames. Um, it normally happens for microseconds or even even less than that, and then immediately. Um, grabs gets control back so it doesn't really matter that much uh, for, for those circumstances what you're more worried about is a continuous or total loss of, 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 of signal so fail safes occur most often um, because of radio uh, signal degradation um, but they can happen for a number of other reasons for example some sort of power failure to the receiver um, that would um, obviously cause an issue with the turbine if it lost that signal so it can happen for lots of different reasons most modern radio systems have a failsafe mode, and this mode is a special mode to um, instruct the receiver what to do in the effect uh, in the event of um, losing losing signal. Um, and there are a number of different options that your receiver can can do. It can uh, hold the channel, so it can hold an output value um, the last good output value it got. Um, it can output a set value in the event of a failsafe or it can output no values at all. Um, the more modern receivers can, can do that. So if you have a fail safe receiver, it's important for you to set that up properly. And I, I know a number of countries have rules around uh, around this. And certainly in the UK, the CAA mandate that you, if you have a fail safe receiver, you set that receiver correctly and that you set the throttle to cut in the event of a fail safe. So what's the point of a fail safe feature on a radio well it's a safety feature uh, it's as simple as that it's um, without it um, we have the possibility of a flyaway model um, the if you imagine for a turbine uh, without it the turbine would still um, be running the fuel pump would still be pumping um, and in the event of a inevitable crash in, in a fail safe situation um, you've got all that heat all that fuel um, and um, you'll almost certainly get some sort of uh, fire if, uh, if if you don't enable it. That's not to say enabling failsafe in itself will prevent a fire. You've still got a lot of hot things there and fuel, um, but you've got more of a chance if the turbine shut down, if there isn't any active flame anywhere. Um, so um, that's why it's very important to set that. 
Okay, so let's talk a bit about how Kingtech have implemented the failsafe system. Um, it's um, a pretty simple implementation. Um, essentially, um, if the um, ECU detects a failsafe condition, and that, that we'll talk a bit about how it detects that in a minute, but when it detects that, it, it starts a timer, internal timer, um, and after half a second, if the signal hasn't been recovered, the throttle um, will immediately throttle down, so your turbine will come down to idle. Um, at that point, the timer continues, and after a further one and a half seconds, if that turbine, if that signal hasn't come back, um, the ECU will shut down the turbine. Okay, so after a total of two seconds of radio failure, the turbine will get shut down. So, how does the ECU determine that the receiver is in failsafe mode? Um, for KingTech, it uses uh, it detects an invalid signal from the throttle channel, and that's normally a super low, lower than low trim signal from the throttle channel. We're here on the Futaba um, endpoint adjustment screen, and this is the kind of the default settings that you'll get uh, for a new model uh, for the throttle settings. So you'll see you'll have the um, travel set to 100% and the limit set to 135%. So this is what Kintech recommend for setting up the, the radio. So we're going to just have a quick look at what the outputs are um, on that channel. So if we just look at this um, servo tester here, a servo monitor here, we can see for low trim, low throttle, we're getting a signal of 975 and about 129% output, uh, minus 129% output. And then trim up, we're getting 1226 output and minus 70. And then full throttle is 1941 and 100%. So we'll use those um, Leave those settings as they are, and we'll do the RC learn process now. Right, okay, let's go in and do the RC learn process. So uh, let's go into the menu, radio menu, and then we just go next, and then start the RC learn process. So it wants stick up, trim up. So let's do that. Okay, seems happy with that, it allows us to save it, so we tick number two to save. And then stick down, trim down. Happy with that. And then stick down, trim up. So the stick is already down, so trim up. And it's happy with that, so let's save that. We go all done now we've finished the rc learn process the the ecu knows our range of throttle settings it knows um what we're going to be um sending for low trim low throttle etc so the next stage is for us to set our fail safe now before we actually set the fail safe value we want to send to the ecu when the radio's off we need to go back and change the endpoints on the throttle so for our low throttle endpoint, you can see it's this side, we need to change these values to the lowest possible value. So if we just change these down. Okay, so uh, these are very, very super low values. Um, that's great. So th those are the values that are going to get pushed out um, when we've got the stick low, the trim low. We can now go into our fail safe menu. And you see here we've got currently the default uh, on the <coughs> on the Futaba, excuse me, is the throttle hold. That's a very bad thing. We don't want it to hold the throttle. So we change that to fail safe. It says, are you sure? Yeah. And now we want to send the value. So when I click this, uh, this button here, it's going to take the current value that we've got, which is all the way down. So that picks up the 152%. That's great. So that's set now. Um, so that's great. So that's a value that will get sent to the ECU uh, when the receiver is in fail safe mode. So we must remember to go back to change the endpoints back to our pre learn um, limits or the, the limits we set when we did the RC learn. So this was 100% and this was 135%. Okay, so that's, that's a process, pretty straightforward. We're now ready to move on and do a test.